Good afternoon, I'm Nancy Donaldson and I'm a physics professor at Rockhurst University and I'm here today to talk with you about Royals baseball and RU physics. So let's say the Royals are playing a game and the Royals are up so they're batting and their pitcher is pitching them and they have a really good pitcher on the opposing team. So everybody knows that baseball is a combination of skill and timing but it's so based in physics. So today I'm gonna to give you just a small glimpse of the physics involved in baseball. So our pitcher pitches a fastball. We'll say the velocity of that ball is 100 miles per hour. Okay, now our batter has to have the skill and timing in order to hit that ball. Also has to have a lot of physics principles. The batter needs to be strong enough to stop that ball and have it go in the opposite direction. And it has to be stable enough because it's a pretty fast ball. So the first thing the batter will do is lower his center of gravity, widen his base of support, and um, make himself stable. Then he will push on his back leg and twist, and then push on the front leg. In doing so, he applies a torque to his body, and a torque causes the rotational inertia, similar to his mass in a rotation sense, to have an acceleration. As his body accelerates through the swing, his bat will apply a force to the ball. So by Newton's second law, that force on the ball causes the mass of the ball to accelerate. And acceleration is a change in velocity over a period of time. So we know that the bigger the force we apply for the same mass, the greater the acceleration on our ball. Okay? So let's talk a little bit more about that contact time when that bat hits the ball. So the ball's coming at me at, at 100 miles an hour and I need to stop it and have it go the opposite direction. So let's just say I'm gonna hit it and it's gonna leave my bat at 100 miles an hour. What that requires is a change in velocity of the ball of 200 miles per hour. It's gotta stop it and get it to go the other way. What causes a change in velocity is something called an impulse. And an impulse is a force acting over a period of time that causes a change in momentum. So we're changing the momentum of the ball. This is the force of the batter on the ball. This is the time of contact. This is the mass of the ball. And this is the change of the velocity. Well, the bigger you make the force, the bigger the change in momentum. The smaller the mass, the larger the change in velocity. So we did some calculations and we wanted to see how big that force actually is. So what we did is our change in velocity here, we put in 200 miles an hour. The mass of a ball is about the mass of an apple and a half. And the time of contact we looked up and it said 0.7 milliseconds, which is 0 0.000 seconds, a really small point of contact. So with all of those numbers, when you solve for the force acting on the ball, you come out with about 13,000 times the weight of the ball. That's a pretty big force acting on that ball. Interestingly enough, this same impulse on the ball also causes a change in momentum of the batter. So the batter's gonna have some recoil. But because he's so much bigger, his change in velocity is smaller. Okay, so now during the point of contact, we have this really big force, which we estimated 13,000 times the weight of the ball acting on the ball. As soon as they're out of contact, there's no force from the batter anymore. At that point, the only force acting on our ball, which is right here as it goes around that parabola, is gravity. So gravity acts on the ball and it acts everywhere. And in every instance, gravity puts that ball in free fall, which means that the only force acting on it at that time is gravity. There's some air resistance here too, but we're gonna make that negligible for right now. So gravity acts on the ball, and what gravity does, if you think about it, I hit a ball this way, well, it doesn't keep going that way. It has a velocity that way, but since gravity acts on it at every point, it starts to slow down in the vertical direction, and then eventually it starts to speed up in the vertical direction and it comes down. So our goal is to make a home run. We wanna get the ball out of there. So there's a lot of strategy in the angle at which this ball travels when it leaves the bat. So if we look at this, we'll make this now a velocity vector. So we're thinking about how big the velocity is at that point when it leaves the bat. 
any time in physics that we have a vector at an angle like this, we can actually think of it as comprised of two components that make it up. So in this case, I can look at this one as part of that velocity going in the horizontal direction, making it cover the range of the field, and part of that velocity going in the vertical direction, which makes the ball go up and down. So those two balls, those two velocity vectors work together to give me what the ball actually travels. So all along here, where the ball ends up is, is a result of how you hit these two. It, we know that 45 degree angle right here is the optimum angle because when you have 45 degrees, these two vectors are the same size. And so what that does for you is while the ball is in the air, it's going that way. And at the same time, it's going up on the way up and down on the way back. So it's going um, up and over, up and over, up and over simultaneously. And then it goes down and over simultaneously. Now, one last thing to consider is the size of your baseball field. Kauffman Stadium, or the K, has a pretty large, it's a pretty large stadium. So it has a um, range of 410 feet from the, from the batter to center field. A large stadium. So when a batter hits right here, what he has to be careful of is having enough range so that during the time that the ball's in the air, it also travels far enough to get over the out of the field and make a home run. If you were in a smaller um, stadium, you could actually even hit this a little bit up because you've all seen pop-ups. Pop-ups that go higher don't travel as far. In a smaller stadium, you could probably actually have that go a little higher and still have it go far enough to make a home run. So that's a little bit of the physics of baseball, and um, our goal is actually to make as many home runs as possible. Go Royals!